Hello and welcome to Roving Report, a program that gives you an overview of the developments in India's northeast region. I'm your host Swati and the highlights of today's program are Experts discuss ways to bring economic transformation in Manipur. Release of Anup Chetia to give impetus to peace process in Assam. Tripura gets broad gauge rail service. Naroka FC lifts CBE Memorial Football Tournament. Economic transformation is the key to the development of the Northeast region as it battles high rate of unemployment, dwindling agricultural output and unimpressive manufacturing sector. Recently, experts in Imphal gathered to discuss ways to boost the economy of the region by implementing various central and state-sponsored schemes. We have a report. The northeastern states in India are lagging behind others because of decades-long insurgency and violence. Gradually, things are changing and a new wave of economic prosperity is gaining momentum. The youth of the region wish to get employment. Industrialists want more business and farmers are aspiring to enhance farm output. In a two-day seminar on economic transformation in Northeast India, predicaments, potentials and policies, experts discussed ways to speed up economic growth in the region. The event was organized by the Department of Economics, Manipur University under the sponsorship of Indian Council for Social Science Research, New Delhi. Various aspects of the economy have been discussed at various academic platforms in the Northeast, but somehow we seem to have lacked at looking at the, at the Northeastern region's economy at the macro level. As a region, we failed to do that. We did not address the issues of agricultural stagnation, industrial non-growth, undirected growth of the service sector as a whole for the Northeast. That is why we have taken up this issue of transforming the Northeastern region's economy in the regional context. Poor infrastructure combined with limited market access has hindered the development prospects of the landlocked Northeastern states. In recent times, a number of policies have been initiated to bring the economy of the Northeast region on par with the national level. The government wants to create employment avenues for the youth. Unemployment is a generic problem, no doubt. It is everywhere, but <clears throat> in Manipur, as you can see that in the official statistics has shown that over 7 lakh people are registered in as a uh, educated. Recently, various skill development schemes, including National Digital Literacy Mission, Electronic System Design and Manufacturing, and Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Vikas Yojana were launched in Imphal with an aim to provide training to local youth and generate employment avenues for them. This will bring the educated but unemployed youth to the mainstream and contribute largely to economic transformation in the region. The release of the top Ulfa's founding General Secretary Anup Chaitya from jail has indicated the return of peace in Assam. Chaitya's joining the pro-talk faction of the Ulfa has only strengthened the peace initiative that the government of India had begun with the Ulfa three years ago. We have a report. On November 24, Ulfa General Secretary Gulab Barua, alias Anup Chaitya, was released from Guwahati Central Jail after 18 years of incarceration in Bangladesh and prisons in India. The court had granted him bail in the last of the four cases registered against him. Soon after the release, Chetia apologized for the 2004 Independence Day blast in Dhemaji, Assam. Thirteen people, including ten school children, died in the incident. Chetia has pledged to never take up arms and said he will join the ongoing peace process. <laughs> I am very happy to be here. 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 
যদিও পরিস্থিতির বাধ্যবাধকতায় আমাক উল্লেখিত করিব পড়া নাই অসমৰ সকলো শ্রেণীৰ ৰাইজে অখে কষ্ট নিৰ্যাতন আৰু ত্যাগ স্বীকাৰ কৰিও সংগ্ৰামৰ অংকিদাৰ হৈ আহিছে তেওঁৰ দৰে এজন ত্যাগী কষ্ট হৈছে কষ্ট হৈছে ব্যক্তিক আতৰ ৰাখা বিস্তাৰিত হোৱাৰ পূৰ্বে তেওঁৰ ওপৰত কোনো মন্তব্য ৰখাটো সমীচিন নহব বুলি ভাবো The Ulfa General Secretary was detained in Bangladesh in 1997 for illegally entering the country using a forged passport and was found in possession of arms and foreign currencies. On November 11, 2015, Bangladesh handed over top Ulfa leader Anup Chetia to India's Central Bureau of Investigation and he was brought to Guwahati on a transit remand. The release is seen as a breakthrough in the ongoing talks between Ulfa, the center and state government. It's a major development. One of the important leader who come back to Guwahati, come back to Assam and said that the insurgency or terrorism will never solve any problem and he has come uh, to join the peace talk. So peace talk will get more momentum except uh, Porez Bura who is leading uh, other faction of the Alpha who is in somewhere in uh, China or Burma border but I believe Onu Shetia's inclusion in the peace talk will help uh, the talks in a to gain a momentum and people of Assam will expect uh, a good news from uh, Shetia and Alpha brand. However, Parish Barua who is the head of military wing of Ulfa is continued to oppose to any peace talks. Experts believe the exclusion of the Barua faction hinders the peace process. Unless Boris would join in a peace talk, there will be little bit of doubt, little kind of problem because he may create problem. He may not get uh, no kind of solution, but he can get problem. So it's it uh, should be the duty of Onup Setia itself because Onup and Boris are actually close relative. They are cousin. So Onup Setia should try uh, on behalf of his own uh, kind of initiative to talk to Boris Barua or even Boris Barua should understand. the situation that it is not uh, 1979 it is not in uh, 89 or 99 it's 2015 or suppose it was 16 now so he should come back he should join in the peace talk he should join in the mo- movement to support the people of assam in the last few decades assam has witnessed violence perpetrated by ulfa in january 2007 the outfit struck in assam killing approximately 62 hindi speaking migrant workers mostly from bihar However, hopes are high that peace will prevail in the state and there will be rapid development and prosperity. Improving connectivity in the landlocked northeast region is one of the topmost priorities of the government. A lot of focus is being given to enhance railway connectivity in the region. Recently, a new broad gauge rail has been launched at Dharmanagar in Tiripura, where a large number of people welcome the first rail engine with enthusiasm. A report. Tiripura is reaping the peace dividends with rapid economic development and improving connectivity. A 69-year-long dream of the people of the landlocked state came true when the first broad gauge engine reached at Dharmanagar station. Thousands of people gathered to welcome the first broad gauge train engine with joy and happiness. On September 20, the state bid ADO to meet a gauge rail engine to pave the way for undertaking BG conversion work. It is the first time a broad gauge engine has arrived here today at about 2:30, and I, I along with others, appeared here. Uh, it is uh, very at about 10 a.m. and since then many public of Dharmanagar has appeared here. They have expressed their enjoy and they have they expressed their feelings and they have welcomed the train and the driver and the other persons from all organizations also there and they have enjoyed and they have welcomed and we hope that very shortly the passenger train will be started from our Tripura. After running the BG railhead the northeast frontier railway is scheduled to bring ballast train to Agartala passing through all stations by first week of January Our uh, dream come true project is crossed its first step the first step engine rolling is completed on date up to Dharmanagar from Badarpur to Dharmanagar and it will continue up to Agartala on this phase later on uh, on next program it will uh, go up to agartala and the rolling will be complete better connectivity will give a boost to the overall economic and social development in the northeastern states 
It will also enhance trade relationships and people-to-people -people contact within the country and with neighboring and ASEAN countries. Peace and development is the buzzword in the Northeast. Let's take a quick look at some development news from the region. Tripura Chief Minister Manik Sarkar inaugurated the 20th Agartala Film Festival at Rabindra Bhavan in Agartala. A total of 23 award-winning films from six countries, including Bangladesh and UK, were showcased during the six-day-long festival. The event was organized by Cine Delve, a body of film lover. The inaugural film screen at the festival was of award-winning Bangladeshi director Ghazi Rakayat's Mritika Maya, Ardhan Love. The film is based on the life of an old Hindu potter, Kero Mohan, who struggles to keep alive the dying potter's business. Christmas was celebrated across the northeastern region with special prayers, hymns and masses in churches, besides the traditional spread of delicious food. In Guwahati, people of all faiths visited Don Bosco Church and shared the message of peace and love. Similar scenes were witnessed at the Baptist Convention Center Church Chinmerong in Manipur, where people celebrated the occasion with great pomp and show. In Tripura's Nandanagar Don Bosco Church, special prayers and musical programs were held during the annual Christmas Eve Midnight Mass. Over 5.3 million Christians live in Mizoram, Nagaland, Meghalaya and Manipur, while there are a significant number of Christians in the other northeastern states. Arunachal Pradesh is all set to host Film Northeast 2016, a film festival of the region from February 17 to 20. The four-day event, which coincides with the Statehood Day celebrations on February 20, is to promote the diversity of cinema in the region. Directors speak, script writing and sound design workshops and film bazaar incorporating various facets of filmmaking will be organized during the event. Bollywood director Vishal Bharadwaj, actors Shahid Kapoor, Saif Ali Khan and Kangana Ranaut, who would visit the state during that time to shoot their film Rangoon, would be part of the award ceremony of the festival on February 20. Replicating Prime Minister Narendra Modi's Skill India mission, Tripura Chief Minister Manik Sarkar formally launched a skill development program to train the youth. Sarkar asserted that skill development mission has been functioning in the state since 2010, but after the announcement of Skill India mission, a separate state directorate was set up. The skill development mission is not just limited to industrial sector, but it pans across agriculture and allied sectors. Poachers killed a male rhino inside the Kaziranga National Park and fled with its horns. The Assam Security Force personnel found rhino's carcass during patrolling along with seven empty cartridge shells of 303 rifles. At least 17 rhinos have been killed by poachers in 2015. Arunachal Pradesh has given shelter to a large number of refugees from Tibet. Today we take you to Khoi Paling Tibetan Refugee Settlement Camp in Changlang District where the Tibetan refugees are engaged in weaving and handcraft work for their survival. Located few miles from Miao town in Changlang district of Arunachal Pradesh is located Khoi Paling Tibetan Refugee Settlement Camp, one of the oldest settlements for Tibetan refugees. Here, the refugees are engaged in producing handmade carpets which is being sold in local market and also outside the state like Delhi and Bangalore. <laughs> Uh, 
लोकली सेल करते हैं आप बाहर नहीं भेजते हैं आप बाहर भी भेजते हैं में एक्चुअली मार्केटिंग का हम लोग का आउटलेट यही है एक्चुअली तो लेकिन हम लोग का जो हमने ऑनलाइन बिजनेस भी है उसके बाद में और ऑनलाइन शॉप्स में हमारा पार्टनरशिप है उसके बाद में दिल्ली और बेंगलोर में हमारा एजेंसी है तो वो लोग वो लोग का मतलब हम लोग यहाँ से सप्लाई करते हैं Many tourists visiting Arunachal Pradesh also visit the refugee camp to buy handmade products. बहुत अच्छा मैं पहले भी आ चुकी हूँ यहाँ पे बहुत अच्छा रखा है लोगों का कारीगरी बहुत अच्छा है The Tibetan refugee camp is inhabited by 500 families with 2800 members. This is one of the 45 Tibetan settlements in India. A beautiful Buddhist monastery in the middle of camp is one of the major attractions for the tourists. Football draws a huge crowd in the northeast and it is the most popular game among the youth. Recently, the 59th edition of Sir Churachan Singh KCSICBE Memorial Football Tournament, popularly known as CC Meet, was held in Manipur. Let's take a look. Over 15,000 spectators cheered for their favorite teams. 21 teams participated in the 59th edition of Sir Churachan Singh KCSICBE Memorial Football Tournament held at Khoman Lampak Main Stadium in Imphal. In the finals, Naroka Football Club and Southern Sporting Union SSU Singjamai competed against each other to win the trophy. The tournament was held under the aegis of All Manipur Football Association AMFA. Just we have witnessed the closing function, the final match of the 59th Sar Surachan Singh KCSI CBE Memorial Football Tournament. So in this tournament, uh, we have witnessed the nice games, the good games, competing each other from nine of these teams, 18 teams from the, the our state and the three from the outside the state. And today, that is the, the end of this competition. Naroka FC won the finals by scoring three goals against one goal by its opponent Southern Sporting Union SSU. The fourth time winner of the championship, Naroka FC, got a cash prize of rupees 5 lakh along with the trophy, while the runner-ups received rupees 2 lakh and the trophy. The match is good. It's so strong. It's good. It's so strong. But uh, Manipur, Neroka is the best. We try our best. Our coaches, our management, everybody. We come out. We play our best. We show our best. Football is not just a craze in Northeast, but it's a way of life. Nowadays, the participation of Northeast teams in the national level tournaments have increased. Be it Bai Chung Bhutia, Sanju Pradhan, Robin Gurung, Rene De Singh, many players from the Northeast have played in the national football team and many more are waiting to join the national squad. one of the major contributors to Manipur's economy and has huge potential for future growth. In a bid to woo tourists, a three-day long festival was recently held at Andro village in Manipur. We take a look. Scenic beauty, pleasant climate and warm hospitality, which help attract tourists to Andro village, a hotspot located 20 miles from Imphal city in the foothills of Nong Mai Cheng Hill. Known for its traditional pottery skills, the small village is now bustling with tourists. Recently, a three-day long festival of food, music, art and culture was organized at the Panam Ningthao Garden in Andro. The event was organized with an aim to promote tourism in the state. I'm 
Hauzi hauzi mukai koi garden si sehi ni kutang mai mai ri. Lingkas apa sih? Aduh mai amu mangdu so ayi garden si sakta ningba. Aduh gumu pandam, aduh gumu waklon duda. Aina garden si loans tu nubuhan apa dah? Si gemela si. Aduh gus silip apa sih biasa? Si nampar mui raga mai amu sakang bi gini hai bagi waklon duda ayi mela si senza mana? The major attraction of the festival was the indigenous food prepared by the locals. Fish and rice beer were served to the tourists and other local visitors. Such festivals should be encouraged, like it is a place of relaxation actually. So we have good food here and our culture are shown and the talents of our upcoming singers are also shown. So it's a awesome. The music is very beautiful. The love song is most beautiful than ever. I like it. My brother also like it. The food is really tasty. The audience was later treated to a wide range of musical performances by popular bands like Imphal Talkies, The Koi, The Dirty Strikes and Pebet. Imphal Talkies a folk and alternative rock band had the crowd grooving to their songs. The band sang a number of their original numbers as well as some popular English songs. Mad Boy Mink from Mumbai Akumika from Nagaland and Left Tone from Delhi also performed at the event. It's very secluded, it's very peaceful, it's very different from our uh, daily life in New Delhi. It's all very hectic, cars and everything. And this is really secluded. I came here and my first thought was I would have liked to come here to attend as well. That's Siddharth by the way, that's the drummer of the band. And yeah, I really like this place. I really like how nice the people are and how simple they appear to be and they actually are. Organizing such festival not only provides a platform to upcoming musicians, but also promote tourism in the state. Manipur has many such scenic locations that can be developed into tourist hotspots. With that, we have come to the end of this episode of Roving Report. Do connect with us to our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter at anyindia underscore ani. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel to get latest news updates from the Northeast. I'm your host Swati, signing off. Goodbye and take care.